Happy Friday, 10th graders. Welcome to week five, lesson 24, your final lesson for the week. Let's get started. I'm hoping the weather this weekend is very nice, so this joke will hopefully put you in the right mood for warm weather. Why did the stadium get hot after the game? Because all the fans left. <laughs> so the video you're watching right now is the last video for the week. It's ELA G10 W5 L24. Today, you're not gonna read a new text, but you're gonna just revisit the poems you've read already, which is um, The Good Life and Money. And then obviously you'll have some work to complete for um, both of those poems, which we'll talk about in a second. And once you go down to lesson 24, you'll see the materials you need for today. So the learning target for today is, I can plan and write a short story that answers a question left open by one of the poetry selections from this week. So you're gonna have a choice today to write a short story for either of the poems, The Good Life or Money. And it's gonna be a short story that answers a question that was left open um, or unanswered by the author. So it's up to you to answer that question in a short story. Let's talk about the specifics of what you're doing today with the Read, Think, Talk, Write protocol. For the read section, you're going to um, review your notes and annotations for both poetry selections. So that's the first read notes and um, the close read notes and basically any annotations you made for both the texts. And then uh, make sure you actually review the guidance for writing a short story on the note catcher. When you get to the note catcher, you'll see that there's um, a gui some guidance around how to write an effective short story. So make sure you're actually reviewing that as well before you do the rest of the, the lesson. For the think part, um, you're gonna think about which selection you prefer more. So um, either which one you liked more or which one you found or which one you found to be more interesting. And you're gonna actually complete a short story assignment um, that will be sort of like a continuation of the poem. So before you actually begin writing though, you're gonna think about the main elements of a short story. And that's when you're gonna use the information provided on the note catcher to help you. You're gonna think about the plot and the characters in the story. You're gonna identify the setting, and you may wish to write sentences for each of the story elements describing the plot, main characters, and setting. So really, you're gonna think about all the elements of, of the poem um, that, will, that basically made the poem what it was. And when you think about these elements, it's gonna help you actually write the continuation of the poem and complete the assignment for today. And um, this is what I was talking about a second ago, how the note catcher actually gives you tips for writing. So you're gonna make sure um, you review this before you, you complete the writing portion of today's lesson. So the talk section today is gonna be um, like it normally is. You have to talk with a family member, caregiver, or friend about this specific question. Which poem resonated with you more and why? Totally up to you to pick the criteria of um, why a certain poem resonated with you more than another poem. And basically it could be because one poem is more interesting or it could be because one poem was more connected to your life. Totally up to you to decide. And then for the writing section, you're going to plan and write a short story that answers a question left open by one of the poems. You're gonna choose one of the following options. So you don't have to do both, just choose one. The first one's about the good life. It says, in the good life, why does the speaker feel nostalgic about the past? What has changed in the speaker's life? The speaker never tells you directly why they feel nostalgic, but you have to basically make your own inference um, as to why they feel nostalgic about the past and what has changed in the speaker's life. Again, I recommend rereading the poem, but you also can, um, can and should use your annotations that you um, made along the way. And then the second option is for money. It says, in money, what has really happened to the thin young boy who claims to be completing a sales program? So you have to go back to that paragraph in the poem and reread it to make sense of it. But um, there was a, a point of the poem where a thin young boy came to the door to try to sell uh, things to the family. And the author never really told you what happened to the thin young boy, but you have to make that inference um, based on what you think from what you read in the poem. And then um, just a reminder, you're actually gonna write your, your short story in the blank space that's provided on the note catcher. And then as always, you're gonna close out with the same two things. First, you're gonna share your writing with someone. And then after you're done with everything, you're gonna read a book for 20 minutes and make sure you document this reading in the reading log. So the quick model today is gonna to be around the elements of a short story. If we go back to the think portion of the lesson, you'll see this tip here. It says, before you begin writing, think about the main elements of a short story. Think about the plot and the characters in the story. Identify the setting. You may wish to write sentences for each of the story elements describing the plot, main characters, 
and setting. So what I'm gonna model for you today is, we're gonna read over the different tips before writing and look at the um, different elements. So the plot, the strong main character and characters, and the setting. And I'm going to basically go over what the plot is, the main, the strong and the main characters are, and the setting for the good life and money. To give you an example of uh, what this, this looks like, what each of these elements look like in uh, real poems or real stories. That I think will help you when you are actually writing your continuation of the poem. Um, if you sort of see examples and see my own analysis of that in the poems. So let's start with plot. So plot is basically a sequence of events. It's sort of like what happens in the story. And sequence doesn't necessarily mean happens in order of time from like, you know, Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to Friday. Sometimes the um, time sequence is out of order. It could be jumping back and forth between time. But um, regardless of when things happen, like they, there's a sequence of events. They happen in a, a, a sequential order, meaning a, a logical order that makes sense to the reader. And often there's a conflict or problem. It doesn't have to be a big conflict, like a physical, physical conflict. Sometimes it can, it can be a conflict internally, um, just with the, the, uh, the character like against themselves. And for the most part, the, in a story for the plot, the, the character is working to resolve the conflict. You may not always see a full resolution where like, you know, the, the conflict is resolved by the end of the story. But typically, you do see the character working towards that resolution throughout the story. So in The Good Life, the plot, I wrote, the speaker becomes nostalgic and reflects on the vivid details of when he or she was poor. There's way, much, there's way more I could write about that besides what I just wrote here. Um, but I was just thinking about the, the most basic plot to, to be able to summarize. And to me, it really was just about the speaker being nostalgic about the time when they had a little money versus the time they had more money because they felt like the time they had a little money made them into a, you know, the person they are today and unique and, 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 and individual, unlike when they had a little bit more money when they were like everyone else. And then the plot for money, the children observe their parents' saving spending habits as people attempt to sell them things at their door. That's really the, the, the most basic form of what happened in the story. The children are observing how their parents interact with the door sales men, men and women and they also sort of reflect on other spending habits of the parents, but it really is through the lens of um, the, the, door, the, the door sales men and women. So for the strong main character and characters part, um, basically every story has a strong main character um, and the author provides a clear description of that character for the readers. Strong main character I mean, doesn't always obviously necessarily means physically strong, but strong means um, they, we have a, a a uh, big understanding, a, a vast understanding of who they are as people. Um, you know, their motivations, their desires, their hopes, their dreams. Um, so you don't necessarily need to describe their physical characteristics. You can, but that's not necessary all the time. We're gonna see that in a second with the good life um, to be able to still know a, a lot about the character and more of those internal traits. So in the good life, the main characters were just one, the speaker. Um, we don't even know the speaker's name, but the speaker could be the author. Maybe the author is writing you know, about their own life. They just didn't say it was from their own perspective. Um, but we don't necessarily know much more about the speaker beyond that they are someone who like works really hard, didn't have a lot of money, was pretty hungry, and then got a little bit of money, had some luxuries, but they didn't actually like it that much because they felt like they were everyone else and they actually preferred living um, the, the time when they had a little less money because they were, were grittier and felt like it, it made them into who they, they are today. We don't know anything like about gender, race, um, identity, other identity markers, age, not, none of that. Um, and that doesn't actually matter. And the author was intentional by not including that stuff because that, that could even be a detractor. We don't need to know that, 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 that um, information about the, the character. We just need to know um, for the sake of the story, what their work ethic was like and what their life was like when they had a little money versus a lot of money. And then in money, I mean, there's two sets of main characters. We have the parents and the children. I would say um, the major main characters are the parents because it's sort of like really about their priorities in terms of money spending and saving. Um, and of course, it's written from the children's perspective, like it's, you know, the children watching their parents, but really we learn about the children only in relation to how they feel about their parents and, and what they see their parents doing. So um, we learn a little bit more about the, the, their physical descriptions here than we do about the main character, you know, the speaker and the good life. 
but we don't really learn that that much about them. We don't know the age of the children. Um, we don't really know, yeah, much about their physical description. Um, they give more physical description about the door salespeople. Um, those are characters too. I wouldn't say they're main characters because they, they sort of come and go, but we do get some physical descriptions about them. Um, but again, the physical descriptions don't matter as much because we can learn just a lot about the characters through their, the choices they, they make and, and some of the dialogue they're having either externally with other people or internally um, with themselves and their, their, their patterns and, and habits and behaviors. And then last but not least is setting. Um, so you should uh, include details about where and when the story takes place. You probably know this by now because you're 10th graders, but you know, where and when doesn't always necessarily physically mean the where of like, you know, it took place in Detroit, Michigan, or the when it took place in 2020. Um, that where and when is way more than just that. Um, it could be political context, social context, where people are in their life journey. Um, and also it could be like the setting could be like just a jump back and forth between undisclosed time periods. Um, set the, like it, it could be past, present, future. That could even be part of the setting too. And this is shown beautifully with The Good Life because um, the full setting is unknown. We do, not, we do know that the speaker is jumping back and forth between time periods, past and present. That's all we really know. We know the speaker is being reflective um, and nostalgic on when they used to have very little money and they were hungry to when they had a little bit more money and they were able to enjoy some luxuries like roast chicken and wine. So um, the only really important detail about the setting is that um, it's, you know, the speaker sort of jumping back and forth between time periods, thinking about um, reflecting back on when they um, were someone with a little money and, and more money. And then in money, the setting takes place at the family's home. We do know that. Um, also, there's a, a scene where they're at church, right? And, but the specific time period is not disclosed. We do know it took place in the past though. There's clues that tell us this, right? The door sales man, men and women that come to the door, um, that like doesn't really happen as much anymore. We, we learned a little bit about like how there were a lot of ordinances passed to stop that from happening. So obviously this took place in the past. We also um, can infer it took place in the past from the amount of money they put into the collection plate at church. I think they put in, with the exception of the um, undisclosed amount in the envelope, which is probably more money, they typically put in like, 10 cents to 25 cents, which back then was probably a ton of money, but like today it isn't that much. So we can infer like, you know, today people probably put at least five, $10, maybe even a dollar, but like 10 to 25 cents is, is, is a little, um, but was probably a lot back then. And then also the amount of money they put into the bank, the parents, um, the mother is saving money for the children and puts, I think $5 into the bank for them. And the kids get so excited by it. And like $5 is probably again, a lot back then. So um, I'm hoping that my description of the plot, the main characters and the setting for each of the poems will help you and understand a little bit more of like how authors construct these different elements. Um, and that will then in turn support you in um, completing the writing assignment where you have to essentially write a continuation of the poem by answering one of those two questions that we went over before. So next week will be week six. And the first lesson of week six is lesson 25. The learning target is I can complete first read annotations to help with comprehension and future analysis of the text. Um, as you know, when we start a new week, we start a brand new text. So your goal will be to complete the first read annotations of a brand new text. And the text is called The Thrill of the Chase by Margie Goldsmith. It's a magazine article. I've read it uh, a bunch of times and I really enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it too. As always, thank you so much for learning with me today. It was a pleasure. A few quick reminders. Number one, don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Number two, read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. The reading log is at the front of your packet. So make sure you go back to the front of your packet to find the reading log. And number three, practice reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. So um, if you forgot everything about fluency, that's okay. Go back to the front of your packet. There's directions there and you can use your weekly reading for the fluency work. As always, email your teacher um, if you need any support. You should know their email by now, but in case you don't, um, this is an example um, of how an email would look in the district. It's just the first name, that last name, at DetroitK12.org. Hope everyone has a great day, and to remember, keep learning.